All right, yeah, welcome back to another tutorial. And in this lesson, we're gonna be taking a look at how to create images from a Docker file. Now, in the last video, we already covered how to create images. So why do we need to know this new process? Well, admittedly, the last technique, it wasn't the best. It was a bit manual, not very scalable. It was error prone. And to be honest, it's just easy to forget the steps. Like if someone asked me tomorrow, how did you create that image? I'm gonna have to remember everything. And counting on my memory is never a good idea. So instead, what we can use is something called a Docker file. And this is, all it is, is really just the configuration file to tell Docker how it should create our image. And in very basic terms, it allows us to replace everything that we did in the last video with one file. All right, sounds pretty cool, so let's get to it. Now, the first thing we're actually gonna need is a new empty folder, a new empty directory. So I'm just gonna CD to my desktop. And all right, so let me just make a directory called temp and CD into temp. All right, so LS, nothing in here. I'm in a brand new directory called temp. What I wanna do now is I just wanna create the actual text file called Docker file. So I'm gonna use nano since you know everyone uh, watching can follow along. And the name of this file is Docker file. It doesn't have any extension. You need to make sure that the case is proper, uppercase D, not TXT, not Docker, not anything. Just create a file called Docker file, that's it. Now, before we get into the meat of what is gonna go into this file, I wanna kind of talk about how I visualize it in my head. Whenever I'm creating a Docker file, I imagine it like I'm turning on a computer for the very first time. I just installed everything, hooked up the power supply, plugged it into the wall, hit the on button, and there you go. So we have a blank computer. It doesn't have an operating system installed. It doesn't have any software. It doesn't have anything, just a plain blank computer. So kind of like the last video, the first thing that we need to do is install our base image, or in other words, our base operating system. So very first line, we're gonna use the keyword from to do this. This means what is your base image or your starting point that you wanna start from? So we can just go ahead and stick with Alpine just to keep things uh, completely the same as last video. We can do latest just like that. So what we have to do after we have Alpine installed or think of it like we now have uh, Linux running on our computer is we can install Redis. Now we are gonna use the run command for this. So what the run command does is it executes the following command, which we're gonna be typing right after this, and it executes it on top of the current image, which in our case is Alpine right now. So remember, got a fire truck going on outside. <laughs> Why are there always like emergencies whenever I'm recording a video? I'm not even gonna pause it, I'm just gonna let it roll, whatever. All right, so pretty much installed Alpine. And then on top of that, we're gonna install Redis. Again, went over this part in the last tutorial, so don't need to walk through APK or anything. Now the last command is ironically CMD, which stands for command. And this is basically our startup command. So even though Redis is installed right here, this basically is just gonna install the software, but it's not actually gonna turn on the program. So in order to do that, for our startup command, use square brackets, then, you know, just quotes like you're writing out a string. We're gonna have the startup command of Redis server. Now, another thing that I wanna point out super quick is you can also have any comments in there. And typically in the Docker file, you're gonna see lots of comments, but um, yeah, not really necessary. You wanna keep this one bare bones. Also, I'm talking through everything, so no really need for that. All right, so now we have our Docker file with three commands. There are actually more commands in addition to from, run, and command, but we'll get into those later on. For right now, let's just go ahead and save it using, depending on what system you're on, control, command, X, and then just do enter. All right, so now we have a Docker file, cat Docker file, there we go. What do we do with it now? Well, with this Docker file, we can actually build an image from it right away. And it's actually very easy to do that. Once you have your Docker file, all you write is Docker build. And the last thing is a path to the directory where your Docker file is. But since it's in the same directory that we're at, we can just use the dot, which is basically a current directory. 
and hit enter. All right, it looked like something happened in, okay, row image. This looks promising. So let me just clear this and see what happened if I go to Docker image LS. All right, so we got our Alpine and Bucky's image, and these were the ones from the last tutorial, so this one must be the new one. And let me just check, all right. Writing image, 52C8, 52C8, okay. So this top one is the new one. However, repository, none, tag, none. It's just a little bit hard to identify right now. So what I wanna do is actually remove this and I'm gonna rebuild it and show you guys an easier way that you can identify it later on. So let me just copy this image ID right now and I'm gonna do docker image remove and I'm gonna force removal of 523C. So there you go, deleted it. And now if I do docker image ls, okay. So we verified that it's gone. Now let's go ahead and rebuild it. So I'll show you guys the old command. All right, so before we did this, docker build period, which just build it with the default settings. But now, since whenever we build it this way, the repository and the tag are, it makes it difficult to identify that image. What we can do instead is pass in the dash T flag. What this does is it gives you the ability to tag your image with a more human readable friendly name. Now the naming convention is typically your Docker ID and mine is the new Boston and then forward slash your project name. And mine is just, let's name it Bucky's Redis. And we'll say that this is the latest right there. So again, all that change from the last build from this one is we included this dash T and you can really tag it anything you want, but this is just kind of convention. And again, don't forget this period at the end. We're building it from the same file, just tagging it something different. Hit enter and all right. So now if we go to Docker image LS, let me just expand this bad boy a little bit. All right. So now instead of none, none, we now have the new Boston Bucky's Redis and latest tag. Now, of course, just to make sure that everything is good to go and we can actually run a container out of this image, just clear out of this and we can do Docker container run. And then we're gonna paste in the new Boston slash Bucky's Redis. And hopefully once I hit enter, nothing explodes and boom, look at that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is how you create an image with a Docker file. Again, there's more to it, lots of different keywords, settings to learn, so on and so forth, but that is the basics. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys later.